Evolution debunked in six minutes? Oh man, finally a video debunking a scientific fact that's a whole extra minute longer than all the other ones. I mean, I just knew those X debunked in five minutes videos would be so much better if they had 20% more completely asinine nonsense in them. Let's do it! Evolution is stupid. Evolution is stupid. You know what? You're right. I mean, did you know that evolution made people the worst things ever? Got to be pretty freaking dumb in order to make that lot by accident or on purpose, but to be fair, it's just a natural factual process that in no way requires intellect. So you've got to give it a few mulligans to do some dumbass shit. We've all been stupid teenagers slash young adults. Speaking of, what do you want there, buddy? And I'm tired of acting like it's not. It's not scientific. Oh shit, you don't mean evolution, the largely unguided by intelligence process, is dumb. You mean the process by which the diversity of life on Earth has been explained in excruciating detail by unfathomable amounts of research and evidence is wrong. Because, well, probably because you're too f***ing stupid to understand it. Oh joy. And the only reason anyone believes something so ridiculous is because they are indoctrinated from the time they are born. Oh, I'm sorry, I must have tuned out because apparently we started talking about religion. I kid, I kid. But no, mate, no, that's not how it works. People believe it, right? Because, and get this, it's f***ing true. But you know what? I get ahead of myself. Perhaps this young Christ Chad has some new unseen evidence that's going to completely blow Evolvy Boys out of the water forever. I mean, that or it's gonna be the same old debunk shit that proves he hasn't learned thing one about what the theory of evolution is or what any of it means. Cause that's never happened before. In movies, in TV shows. I mean, yeah, there's not a minute that goes by when they don't just flash Darwin was right and now you're God in big bold letters across the screen in every fucking piece of media ever. I mean, I used to find it distracting, but now I can't watch something unless it has my subliminal messages in it. They make me feel all warm and fuzzy. In school. Oh no, you're right, he's got us there. They teach evolution in schools, that's true, and is obviously proof that it must be nonsense, because everything they teach in school is nonsense. I mean, history, <laughs> that's all fake. We all know the Earth's only been around since 2005, and English, I thinks me I'm talking pretty good without that shit, thank you very much. You all dumb, and me smart. And all it takes is some basic level questions to be debunk this crazy fairy tale. Oh, I just cannot f***ing wait to hear them, buddy. But if I, a moron masquerading as a cosmic horror, masquerading as a cartoon character, can easily answer your questions and refute your claims, then you have to go to your room and think about what you've done. What am I saying, think? <laughs> For example, how did the first I develop? They say, oh, this is easy, we've done this so many times. Wait, you have the answer already, and yeah, the first thing resembling an eye would have been a cluster of cells that reacted to light and gradually developed from there. Not even remotely difficult to answer. How on earth does that question refute evolution? Jesus. This is uh, probably what happened. Wait, what probably happened? Wait, what the f***? You disingenuous little shit. What, did you go to the Matt Powell school of how to be a totally intellectually honest smart guy? Because I've got some bad news for you, mate. You need to get your money back because that shit is slimy as f***. Science about what actually happened. It's about what is empirically verifiable, what is observable, what is repeatable. No, at least for the first part. Science isn't about facts tm certainly not in the way someone like you would understand them science gathers data to figure out what the most likely answer is but science wouldn't be science without the ability for those scientific facts as we currently understand them to be wrong that's what that other repeatable observable shit is about and you would know that if you weren't simply repeating words someone had said to you instead of actually you know understanding what science is yet you have to assume evolution to come up with this explanation about how the eye could have developed. No, you freaking doof. The fact that we worked out that's how eyes likely developed works hand in hand with evolution and would be one of the many, many, many pillars that support evolution's rock fucking solid foundation. Also begging the question, seriously, you really don't want to be using logical fallacies, my dude. You'll f***ing hurt yourself with them. Have your bleeding eye out, you will. 
which would be ironic. Probable explanations is not science. We are talking about what actually happened. Let's just ignore how stupid that is for a second and just hone in on probable explanations not having anything to do with science. Um, you ever heard of a hypothesis, my dude? Where the fuck do you think any scientific theory begins? Oh, right, you're probably a creative boy or something. They either come from the Bible, or that ain't science, right? Yeehaw, etc. What we can go and repeat and do and what we have seen, yet you come up with these crazy fantasies about how an eye could have developed, but you have to assume evolution to believe in that. And I thought I spoke in run-on sentences. Christ! First off, just calling something you don't understand crazy doesn't make it so. You want to play the fallacy game, there's plenty in doing that alone. But no, evolution does not need to be assumed. It is self-evident. Evolution is a fact. It's a thing that happens all the time, and with unbelievable amounts of evidence for it. What you don't seem to understand is that there is also a theory, a scientific theory, mind, which is as close to those facts you think you know anything about, as there could be. There is a scientific theory of evolution that describes the fact of evolution. Do you wonder why that is? Oh, right, I forgot. Thinking is for people who've been to school. The science man did not see the eye develop and say, oh, this is a science. This is what happened. We, this is empirically verifiable. The science man did not see it. Oh, you f***ing numpty. You know, you would be almost adorable if I didn't see a proto-Kent Hovind forming before me. The eye specifically, although there are so many types of eyes specifically, isn't even worth considering. But just as a concept, no, the science man, whoever the f*** that's supposed to be, did not see that. He saw the evidence for it and also the evidence for things we can see evolving today, and put two and two together, and then boom, a huge chunk of our understanding of biology and adaptations and things you could never hope to wrap your tiny little mind around, explained in great detail. And more importantly, extremely accurately. But no, they were all tricked because someone once used the word probably while explaining eyes to you. They assume evolution is true, therefore, oh, it can give an explanation for everything. It's a evolution of the gaps. Oh my god, that's the fucking dumbest thing I've ever heard. Today. Jesus Christ, dude, who is feeding you this garbage? Like, who do you subscribe to? Oh my god, you're a J. Dyer fan. <laughs> if there's any gap in the worldview, oh, well, random chance, natural selection, it can explain it. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, that was mean. Um, no, no, dude, it's not an evolution of the gaps. Because evolution is more than just the word and then shouting, ta-da, whilst doing jazz hands. Evolutionary biology is an extremely in-depth subject with countless man hours of research and piles and piles and piles of evidence backing it up. Compared to what you likely believe, which has a bunch of people saying they really like the idea, so it must be true. It's like a god, it's like god of the gaps, except it's, it, which is a terrible argument, yet they are committed to this, and you can see because they will make everything fit their grand narrative. Right, dumbass, it's nothing like god of the gaps, because god of the gaps says, we don't know what this thing is, well, god must have done it, end of story, and your evolution of the gaps doesn't make any sense, because no one says, how did this happen, meh. Just say evolution moving on. There's actual study and experiments and research and understanding and everything that doesn't happen when people switch their brains off, shrug and say, meh, God must did it. It's not even remotely comparable. And what's worse is that you think this is a good argument. Jesus. Even if you grant them that somehow an eye could develop, how do you get two eyes that are nearly identical? <laughs> Stop being so hilarious, dude. I mean, apart from the fact that nature favours symmetry, so why the f*** wouldn't they be identical? But like, the fact that, you know, the eyeballs aren't separate like that? If you think of DNA as a recipe, then you only need the recipe for one eyeball and you just make it twice. How is this so hard for you, dude? I mean, the mathematical improbability of this, but then to get it twice? This is so ridiculous. Mathematical improbability? The f*** are you talking about? Oh, right, that stupid argument. Yes, if there was one chance for eyeballs to come into existence, as they are, then the statistical improbability is astronomical. But that's not how it works. There wasn't one chance, there wasn't two chances, there were millions and millions and millions of chances. Probably more throughout all of history 
for the eye to develop countless iterations and refinements, countless chances, get whatever features they need, and for them to stick to the point where it's practically inevitable. Christ, it's infuriating to talk to someone so confident in their own utter ignorance. I know I do it every day, but that doesn't change the fact that this shit is super annoying. The easiest way to demonstrate this is to bring up the complexity of DNA. And because they assume evolution is true, they will come up with literal fairy tales like primordial soup as the origins of DNA. Fantastic! You are now bringing up ideas that are rejected by science in order to debunk science. You really are the bastard child of Matt and Kent, aren't you? Fuck me. And the complexity of DNA is not something you want to bring up, because that shit is a wild spaghetti soup of nonsense that any half-competent god would cut down to a couple of lines of C++ that just said, make who mans though. If anything, the messiness of it refutes an interventionist god, not the other way round or some of them will even believe in aliens. So they will literally believe anything except the historical narrative. Believe is the wrong word. I mean, sure, some people believe some wacky crap, but you are confusing possible explanations, and the operative word there is possible, with the things these people believe are facts because evolution am their religion. We don't think like you, mate. There are tons of possible explanations. That doesn't mean I believe all of them, or any of them, but I can at least pass the merits of them into what is or isn't more or less likely. And aliens existing is well above invisible sky time and space man, sorry not sorry. The biblical narrative. Biblical narrative and historical narrative are not the same fucking thing, you doof. They aren't even close. The amount of shit the Bible gets wrong about very easily checked shit from history is freaking staggering. So the idea of it being a historical document of any factual value, especially on its own, is basically zero. And even when it does get things right, well, no duh. If someone released a book that said, the sky is blue, and then went on a thousand page tirade about Purple Jimmy, the earth spanning octopus, and how he's such an inconvenience to our day to day lives, you wouldn't suddenly believe it. Everyone knows Jim is an asset to this planet, and we would be nowhere without him. Really? Because obviously, a primordial soup to explain something as complex as DNA just makes so much sense. No, it doesn't, and no one within the scientific fields that discuss the origin of life has talked about the primordial soup in a serious way for ages. But even if that were the dominant theory, it's the origins of DNA. You know, like, it wasn't as complex as it is now, as if there was some sort of process that explained in detail how things change over time. Oh, if only there was a word for that. Again, we've never seen this, just like we haven't seen monkey into man. We haven't seen the eye develop. We haven't seen DNA come to, to be in a primordial soup. Listen, numbnuts, science and observation isn't merely about seeing something happening directly with one's eyes. It's also about evidence. Things that are left behind by things that happened. And when you have tens of thousands of pieces of evidence that all point towards a specific conclusion, then only an idiot would decide that actually this random book written by random idiots must be the real truth instead because I don't like using my brain. The fart noises it makes are too loud and they scare me. They are committed to evolution. They, they can't answer any of that. They can't answer junk DNA. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They can't answer junk DNA. I mean, even if that were true, how the f do you answer junk DNA? Why the hell has a perfect omnipotent god made anything that has something that could possibly resemble junk DNA? Are you fucking kidding me right now? If I didn't know any better, I would think you were fucking with me. But then I remember, you're you and it all makes sense. And the more and more questions you ask them, you're gonna realize how committed they are to evolution of the gaps. Just because lots of things are answered with ideas that come from evolution doesn't make it an of the gaps argument. That's like saying, I asked this guy to add up some numbers and he just kept using a mathematics of the gaps argument. Yes, the field that explains the change of things over time and explains how biological things came to be like they are today, aka evolution, is evolution because it's evolution. What the fuck is wrong with your brain? you're gonna realize they really don't know anything. Yet they are committed and they get mad at me when I don't take it as a gospel of truth that I'm a monkey man. Accusing people of not knowing anything. Damn. You know what? That's fine on the second part. You're not a monkey man. I am completely on board with your refusal of that. Because I don't think you're either. Clearly not a man. 
and monkeys are close to humans, and you're more of an amoeba boy than anything else. And they are perfectly fine with indoctrinating young impressionable kids in the entire world to believe their made up mythology. Ah, hypocrisy, thy name is creationists, and biblical literalists, and whoever else shouts no you at firmly established and incredibly robust scientific ideas, while spouting the most inane nonsensical gibberish in the entire f***ing universe. Love to see it. And if you disagree with them, you're a heretic against scientism. Oh, he said scientism, guys. That am defeated us forevers. Damn, I didn't realize you were so smart that you would just throw out stupid buzzwords to make scientific literacy sound like a religion. <sighs> Fuck's sake, dude, it's like you've thrown out every bad faith, fallacy-laid, misinformed, nonsensical pseudo-argument in the book. I'm almost f***ing impressed. And they will discredit anyone as pseudoscience if you don't agree with their made-up mythology. No, you discredit yourselves by ignoring the rigors of actual science to run around screaming, But my book, though. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe, and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six's channel, Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships, and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-